The material today is a combination of the material from the first two days. We're going to look at 2D motion, which could in general be horribly complicated, but we're going to use the methods of vectors to break a 2D problem into two 1D problems. And most of what we're going to do will be projectile motion. And what that means is something has to be unpowered, so this can't be a rocket or an airplane. And it's moving through space with no air, because we're not going to look at air resistance here. The only force acting on it is gravity. So the part that, that simplifies this greatly is gravity doesn't care about motion parallel to the surface of the Earth. All that it's concerned with is up and down. And the result of that is you could fire a bullet horizontally from a gun on flat ground, and it'll hit the ground at the same time as a bullet dropped from the height of the gun would hit. So for our first example, let's say we're going to fire a cannon from level ground. We'll give it a muzzle velocity, and that's the speed that the ball leaves the cannon, of 125 meters per second, and we'll raise it up to an angle of 35 degrees above the horizontal. And the first thing we have to do is get x things and y things together. First, if we're firing from flat ground to the same ground, same level of ground, we have yi equals yf equals zero. We know acceleration in the y direction will be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We know that there will be no acceleration in the x direction since we have no air resistance. We might as well also set the initial x position to zero. We find the initial x and y velocities using the techniques of vectors. So we take the muzzle velocity, multiply it by cosine of theta to get the vx initial, 102.4 meters per second. Then muzzle velocity times sine theta to get the y velocity, the initial y velocity, 71.7 .7 meters per second. Notice as a check to make sure nothing has gone wrong, if your angle is less than 45 degrees, your x velocity should be larger than your y velocity. One of the most common problems people have on a test is they will end up mixing up x and y. They'll plug the wrong thing into to an equation. Another similar problem is they'll use the magnitude v, the 125 meters per second in this case, instead of one of the components. But it's important to keep in mind that once we've gotten these two components, we're not going to use 125 for anything else again the rest of the problem. <clears throat> so what are common questions we could ask? What about the projectile's range, which is how long, how long it travels across the ground? How long is it in the air? How high does it go? How long does it take to reach maximum height? And what is its velocity at impact? So time in air is something that's determined by why things. We'll have to use those to find that. And also, keep in mind, we don't have to answer these in the order they're asked. When I get a test back, I have no idea if you started at the beginning, middle, or end. So to find the time in air, we see we know y initial, y final, ay, and vy initial. We use this longest kinematic equation, and we can solve this for time, and we get 14.63 seconds in air. So this answers the second question, but we're going to use it to answer the first one as well. If the projectile is in the air for 14.63 seconds, we want to know how far it goes. We can use the exact same kinematic equation, only this time for x. Notice we're not going to have a quadratic term because ax will be 0. So it will reduce to x final is x initial plus vx initial times t. And we've already said we're going to set x initial to be 0. So we plug in our numbers and we get 1,478 meters. To find the maximum height reached, this works the same way as in one-dimensional problems. We use the fact that vy final is zero if your final position is the maximum height. We can then use this kinematic equation, plug in what we know, and we get that it reaches a height of 262.3 meters. To find the time to max height, there's a couple of ways we could do it in this case. Uh, we could just divide the time in air by two because we have a symmetric path. It, it's fired from the same height at which it lands. What's a little bit more general, though, is to use this kinematic equation and say, okay, Vy final is zero. Vy initial is what we found before, 71.7 .7 meters per second. We know Ay. We solve for T. We get 7.32 seconds. Finally, velocity at impact, 
AX equals zero, so we know the X component of velocity won't change. VX final is VX initial. VY final, we'll use the same formula and plug in our full time of 14.63 seconds, and we get negative 71.7 meters per second. This isn't very surprising because if we had thrown a rock straight up, we would expect its velocity on impact to be the negative of its velocity when we started. The only time this won't be the case is if yi is not equal to yf, so if we're throwing a rock up to the top of the building or from the top of the building to the ground. To find the magnitude of the final velocity, we then take the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. We get 125 meters per second. The direction this time is negative 35 degrees, so the path down is a mirror.